Your Excellency, President Mohamed Gozani, Chairman of the Africa Union Assembly, Your Excellency's Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency, my friend, Ajay Banga, the President of the World Bank Group, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Kenya. On behalf of the people and the government of Kenya, I, quel I welcome you all to Nairobi for the Ida for Heads of State Summit. It is an honor for Kenya to host this Ida replenishment conference at this historic venue, the place where African heads of state recently united with a bold vision. Here, we committed to transforming our continent into a thriving middle income region, leveraging our unique potential to drive global solutions. Today, we build on that legacy by actualizing our potential to provide those solutions through necessary financing. I extend my deepest gratitude to each of you for joining us at this pivotal summit. Your presence not only honors us, but also reaffirms our shared commitment to the International Development Association, our cornerstone for achieving the development goals of our continent and beyond our continent. We convene at a critical juncture, facing a convergence of global crisis. This includes escalating geopolitical tensions that challenge international unity, a deepening development and debt crisis that threatens our economic stability, and urgent climate emergencies that demand immediate and collective action for our planet's survival. Today, we gather here, Kenya and the broader East Africa region faces severe flooding that devastated communities, destroyed infrastructure, and disrupted our economies. Concurrently, Southern Africa confronts intensifying drought, affecting nations like Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Just last year, the roles were reversed, highlighting our shared vulnerability to extreme weather patterns. As I speak to you in this podium, 10,000 people in Nairobi City are displaced by floods. That is the gravity of the situation. Only a year ago, we had a devastating drought on the other end. This new normal demands our immediate and united action to safeguard our collective future. This underscores the critical role of IDA for Africa Summit. As a cornerstone of financing for Africa, IDA has directed 75% of its total commitments, nearly US dollars 26 billion, to our continent in the last fiscal year, with African nations comprising eight of IDA's top 10 borrowers. This support is not just financial. It is a lifeline for our development and also our stability. And your presence, personal presence, my friend Ajay Banga in this meeting is a demonstration of the centrality of the discussions that will happen in this meeting and your personal commitment to this continent, which we appreciate. IDA stands out for its rapid and decisive action during crisis, distinguishing itself from other funding sources. Its demand-driven programs, combined with concessional loans of 40 to 50 years, empower borrowing nations to pursue sustainable long-term development strategies. And this is what we have been asking for. Long-term, concessionary. We now want to discuss in this meeting scale. 
That is the only aspect that is missing in this configuration. And as IJ Bank has said, two things are missing, scale and design. Make it simpler. Now, more than ever, long-term concessional financing is vital. As many Africans and other developing nations face severe debt crisis, this financial strain hampers our efforts to combat climate change, transition to low carbon economy, and adequately fund essential sectors like education, health, and social protection. We have frequently discussed the financial challenges that restrict our economic capabilities and reduce our investment in resilience and growth. High interest rates lead to unsustainable sovereign debt, complicate refinancing, and destabilize our currencies. Additionally, the rising cost of living, increased commodity prices, and supply chain disruptions severely impacting our food security, healthcare systems, and overall preparedness for response to crisis. Last year, we brought to global attention that African nations pay interest rates up to five times higher than typical World Bank IBRD rates. This year, the situation has worsened. Developing countries are now net contributors to the global economy, contrary to expectations of receiving net inflows. Projections, for example, for 2024 show a net outflow of US dollars 74 billion from IDA countries like Kenya and others to donor nations, while net financial transfers to developing countries have plummeted from US dollars to 25 billion in 2024 to now a low of US dollars 51 billion in 2022. Those statistics are glaring by any measure. Given these conditions, sustainable growth remains elusive for African nations as we allocate more funds to debt service than to crucial sectors like education, health, and social protection. This financial strain was prevalent in two-thirds of African countries even before the pandemic struck. Notably, in 2020, one in every four sub-Saharan African countries dedicated over 17 percent of its public revenues solely to interest payments. The IMF reports that sub-Saharan Africa's ratio of interest payments to revenue has more than doubled in a decade, reaching nearly four times that of advanced economies by the end of 2022. As a result, over half of IDA recipients today face debt distress or are at a high risk of debt distress. IDA remains their most dependable source of patient capital, with every dollar of donor financing enabling an additional US dollars 3.5 in capital market leverage to amplify development impact. This endeavor transcends financial returns. It is about fulfilling our collective global aspirations. Africa's commitment to economic transformation, reducing poverty and inequality, and enhancing human well-being is essential and demands significant capital investment. Moreover, the global goal of achieving net zero by 2050 cannot be realized without Africa's active participation, a failure which would jeopardize humanity's survival, not just African survival, humanity's survival. It is imperative to understand with substantial investment in our vast energy resources, Africa cannot only provide power to all its citizens, including the 600 million currently without access, but also significantly advance global decarbonization 
effort. Let me say this uh, broadly. If there was a case to be made for a win-win outcome, Ida is the best example. Because everybody wins. The donors win, the recipients win. The donors win because they, it is an investment for them. For the recipients, it is an opportunity. In both cases, we have winners. The donors will put money in renewable energy, in energy in general, and we can continue world manufacturing and industrialization using African mineral resources, using energy that we have in abundance, and using labor that we have in abundance, and we can share the outcome of that industrialization with the rest of the world. By investing in IDA, we unlock 60% of the world's arable and cultivated land for food security and nutrition, not just for Africa, but for the globe. By investing in IDA, we unlock the human resource potential in our continent, Africa being the youngest continent in the world, investing in education, in health, in uh, social protection, gives us the opportunity to provide 40% of the world's workforce by 2050. Investing in, I, in, in IDA gives us the opportunity to decarbonize global economy and provide for green growth. Let me say this. Our continent possesses 60% of the world's prime solar resources, and our untapped renewable energy potential exceeds 50 times the projected global electricity demand by 2040. However, realizing this requires a shift in investment strategies with affordable long-term capital at scale being central. Our proposal and request entail a vision for Africa driven an Africa-driven socioeconomic development executed with transparency and inclusiveness, and our case is straightforward. Let me put it this way. Significant capital injection into IDA is crucial. The G20 Independent Expert Group recommends tripling IDA's financing capacity to US dollars 279 billion by 2030 while maintaining the essential concessional nature of its financing. At the very least, and if we cannot do anything else, let us not ignore or wish away this expert advice. We seek not just funding, but a partnership for progress. African nations propose a robust plan for climate positive growth aligning with the Nairobi Declaration from last year's Africa Climate Summit to ensure stable, dignified, and sustainable livelihoods across our continent. Africa is poised to transform its agriculture, water security, and energy access while creating job opportunities for over 4 million youths entering the job market monthly and expanding our small and medium enterprises as well. Central to these opportunities is our commitment to African-led initiatives. We aim to control our destiny, managing our resources responsibly and sustainably to drive Africa's industrialization agenda using our abundant energy, mineral, and human capital resources. Our commitment to transparency and accountability is in our socioeconomic development plans ensuring the efficient and effective use of IDA is central to our plan. We acknowledge the vital role of diverse stakeholders beyond governments and traditional donors committing to deeper and broader engagement to enrich our development outcomes. We are committed to empower the Africa Union Commission to make it fit for purpose 
with capacity to engage the rest of the world on behalf of Africa. We are committed to reform the Pan-African Parliament to enhance oversight and accountability over the Commission and establish an African Court of Justice so that we are ready to engage with the rest of the world. Faced with a relentless challenge of climate change and escalating instability, our unity is our strength. Despite the myriad forces that threaten to divide us, we must remain focused on the ultimate goal, safeguarding the future of our civilization, the human race, and the diverse life forms that share our planet. Africa is eager to contribute to the solution. Our continent offers a viable and promising pathway to a future of prosperity for all humanity, harnessing our rich resources and innovative spirit. IDA's efficiency and effectiveness make it a unique force for good. Africa recognizes this and we don't take it for granted. We are setting an example with our ambitious plan for structural and systemic reforms underpinned by steadfast commitment to tangible results, transparency, and a robust partnership. Given the enormity of the challenge faced by African countries and its global implications as collective emergency, we call on our partners to meet us at this historic moment of solidarity and respond effectively by increasing their IDA contribution from the US dollars 93 billion raised in 2021 to at least US dollars 120 billion in 2024. As we make this call, we as African heads of state and government commit to play our part by taking deliberate and robust actions to improve fiscal discipline, increase domestic revenue mobilization, develop investor-friendly policies, and enhance anti-corruption measures. IDA exemplifies the best of global cooperation, characterized by compassion, lasting dedication, and a fruitful collaboration. By fortifying IDA, we do more than just honor these values. We significantly enhance our joint ability to tackle global challenges. Let us value and expand the reach and influence of this vital resource. Together, let us be bold, let us be ambitious, and let us act with conviction. Thank you, and God bless you. Chair of the African Union and President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, the President of the World Bank, Mr. J. Banga, ladies and gentlemen, I thank the dynamic President of the Republic of Kenya, His Excellency William Ruto, for the invitation to speak at the summit of the International Development Association, IDA, and for the hospitality of the Kenyan government. This gathering serves as a platform for collaboration and a catalyst for transformative change. As we convene here, we're tasked with a great responsibility to articulate the case for an ambitious and robust 21st replenishment of the IDA, one that will pave the way for sustainable development and prosperity, not only for the African continent, but also for all nations in need. The challenges we face in the 21st century are immense and multifaceted. From the continuing effects of poverty and inequality to the urgent threats posed by climate change and pandemics, a world is in need of bold and innovative solutions. Yet amidst these challenges lies an opportunity, an opportunity to redefine our approach to development, to reimagine our priorities, and to forge a path towards a more equitable and sustainable future. 
The IDA, with its long-standing commitment to poverty eradication and inclusive growth, stands as a testament to the power of international cooperation. Over the years, it has played a pivotal role in lifting millions out of poverty, expanding access to education and health care, and building resilient communities. However, as we look ahead, we must acknowledge that our work is very far from finished. Millions still live in poverty. Millions still lack access to basic services. And millions suffer from the effects of environmental degradation and climate change. Excellencies, all of us are aware, for example, of the enormous infrastructure challenge confronting Africa. The African Development Bank, AFDB, estimates Africa's infrastructure needs at between 130 to 170 billion United States dollars annually, with a financing gap of between 68 billion and 180 billion dollars annually. The net infrastructure gap has a negative impact on our competitiveness. It constrains our development, stifles business growth, trade investment, and service delivery, as well as the overall progress towards inclusive and sustainable development. Mobilizing finance and investment remains central to Africa's development needs and attaining the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Our biggest challenge is not a scarcity of financing, but overcoming a global economic system that has not allocated sufficient long-term resources to support Africa's economic transformation. That is why boosting the resources of the IDA, whose ability to generate concessional financing reflects, represents an effective way to respond to the obstacles that African countries encounter in the present global system is so critical for the prospects of Africa's development. With the burgeoning population, our challenges, our challenges hinge on our ability to provide reliable electricity, affordable and decent housing, improved transformation, transformation networks, education, and health infrastructure. Without this, we will be staring down again the possibility of a lost decade characterized by suboptimal GDP growth. Excellencies, more than half of African countries are debt distressed. Ghana is currently going through the restructuring of her debts under the G20 Common Framework which we all know is a slow process and needs to be stepped up. At the same time, we're suffering from the increasing effects of clim climate change and the devastations caused by COVID-19 and other adverse global developments. Doubling IDA to provide more concessional facilities to our countries is of utmost importance to help us cope with these challenges. The intersection between climate and debt makes imperative the need to reform the global financial architecture in a way that delivers more resources to our countries to help address the current poly crisis affecting our development and that of future generations. Therefore, the time has come for us to redouble our efforts to recommit ourselves to the principles of solidarity and shared responsibility, and to unlock the full potential of the IDA. This replenishment presents us with a unique opportunity to mobilize resources, to leverage partnerships, and to scale up our impact. It is a chance to invest in the future, in education, in healthcare, in infrastructure, and in the resilience of our communities. But let us be clear, this is not just about funding. 
This is about vision, about leadership, and about political will. It is about recognizing that development cannot be achieved through aid, but requires a comprehensive approach that addresses the root causes of poverty and inequality. It is about empowering communities, building capacity, and fostering innovation. And it is about ensuring that no one is left behind, that the most vulnerable amongst us are given the support and opportunity they need to thrive. In conclusion, I want to state that the task before us is daunting, but the stakes are too high for us to falter. Together we can shape a brighter future for generations to come. Together we can build a world where every child has the opportunity to fulfill his or her potential where every family can live in dignity and security, and where every nation can achieve sustainable development. Let us seize this moment, let us rise to the challenge, and let us make history. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Allow me to call on the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good morning, Your Excellencies. Your Excellence, Dr. William Bruto, President of the Federal Republic of Kenya, Republic of Kenya, His Excellency Mohammed Gozwani, the President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania and the Chairperson of African Union, Your Excellency's fellow African leaders and heads of states, Ex His Excellency, Your Excellency Mr. J. Banga, the President of the World Bank, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. As an opening it is an honor and privilege to participate in this great occasion of the discussion of the African leaders on the future of financing of our common development agenda with the President of the World Bank, his senior leadership team and donors. Instead of well replenished ID, IDA 21, means more opportunity for investment, job creation, economic growth, and effective response to the devastating global shocks like the climate change, which hampers all our progress despite our minimal contribution as a continent. Essentially, in this age of increasing global uncertainty, socio-economic, political, and security risks like the Red Sea crisis, as well as the enormous development financing need, we must ensure IDA 21 becomes the main vehicle to support sustainable development without this almost all developing low-income nations will struggle to deliver progressive changes from, from the offset. I wanted to thank the government and the, the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency President William Ruto for hosting this critical meeting on IDA 21, the banishment, and for bringing us all together. I also wanted to recognize the visionary leadership of His Excellency I.J. Bank, the president of the World Bank Group, who has demonstrated that he is firmly committed to leading a responsive bank that delivers results through the evolution roadmap. It is encouraging that the World Bank is listening, learning, innovating, and acting to provide 
a tailored context, a specific support for our most urgent priorities to spark growth in Africa. Somalia and Ida for Somalia, Ida is a major lifeline that we are relying on enabling our ambitious national transformation agenda in this hopeful and post-debt relief priorities. IDA's impact on Somalia are enormous and include core institutional and system building culminating in the achievement of heavily indebted poor countries have been completion point in December 2020. To 2023. Up to 20% of the Somali population have benefited from the World Bank funded activities in Somalia since 2018. Approximately 69% of these beneficiaries were poor, living, poor people living with small children and were affected by the drought, floods and a locust infection in many parts of Somalia. Support to the rehabilitation of access roads and climate responsive, climate resistance climate infrastructure in many parts of Somalia and many municipalities and corners of Somalia bring various benefits to millions of people, including internally displaced people, IDBs that had migrated to urban areas due to security, natural disasters, events. Provision of effective livelihoods and life-saving assistance to our citizens throughout the triple, the tri the triple crisis of climate shocks, locust infestation, and COVID-19 pandemic. Essentially, Ida in Somalia has meant more has meant more vulnerable people out of extreme poverty, more social protection, and women and children are focused on supporting government institutions by helping those vulnerable groups. Despite our successful decade long economic reforms to achieve debt relief throughout the highly indebted poor countries initiative HIBIC, we remain among most fragile states in the African continent and the world. Without doubt, Somalia has come a very long way from where we were on a decade ago in terms of macroeconomic stability and socioeconomic development. We also have exciting and empowering plans to keep the reform momentum going on to lock in the vital gains we have made and built on, and built on them for a transformative change. However, these efforts require resources. Accordingly, we require an, uh, the upcoming IDA 21 replenishment to be of the scale and ambition that will help shift the situation from fragility to resiliency and growth in Somalia. And this, this can only be happen through greater investment in human capital, infrastructure, social protection, job creation, increasing affordable energy access, and building, and building resilience to the disastrous and disproportionate impact of recurrent and cyclical climate emergencies in my country through IDA 2021. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a government, we are truly committed to build on the economic reforms, economic reform gains from 
from the debt relief process by the future. Further enhancing domestic revenue, mobilization and strengthening public and financial management, debt management, and deepening financial sector development in Somalia. We are cognizant that the most reliable income for the nation is what, what it collects from the, its citizens and invest, investors to reinvest the priorities and the public service needs accordingly. With a focus on clear laws and more efficient and effective tax administration, we are steadily growing domestic revenues. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude that IDA is a tool that helps Africa to progress and in particular Somalia to move forward as fast as we can. Adjustments, tolerances, and flexibility is what is required in the years to come to benefit from the IDA resources. Again, I would like to thank the government and the people of Kenya for providing us this opportunity to discuss about the future of our nations in economic development. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. I would like to invite the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, His Excellency Dr. Julius Madabio. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya. The African Union Chairperson and President of the Republic of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, His Excellency, Mohammed Oud Sheikh Al Ghazwani. Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, President Ajay Banga and Senior Management of the World Bank Group, Representatives of the United Nations, the African Union and other regional bodies, Representatives of governments, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I bring you very warm greetings from the government and people of Sierra Leone. I extend my deep gratitude to President William Ruto and the people of Kenya for hosting the 21st replenishment of the International Development Association Summit for Africa 2024 either 21. I express similar appreciation to the International Development Association team and its partners for their relentless effort in accelerating the mobilization of much needed resources that will support the transformational development objectives of low-income countries, including those in our beloved continent. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is at a crossroads. Our continent faces an array of challenges unique in its history. Recovery from the devastating impact of COVID-19, rising debt and economic vulnerability, political instability, the growing disruption of climate change, often compounding underlying fragilities and the full crisis triggered by the conflict in Ukraine. According to the Sustainable Development Goal Report 2023, 
If the current trends persist, about 7% of the world's population, which is 575 million, we remain in extreme poverty, with most of them being in sub-Saharan Africa. Many governments in Africa are making huge strides to advance sustainable development and alleviate extreme poverty in their countries in alignment with targets set out in the African Union Agenda 2063 and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. However, with six short years left to achieve the SDGs, most of our countries are not on track to meet the targets. Under current circumstances, a business as usual approach to Africa's development is not going to work. We need a change in our approach. We need a bolder vision that will transform Africa, reduce its vulnerability in a turbulent world, and set it firmly on a path to sustainable growth and prosperity. Our current exigencies call for decisive and collaborative actions from African governments and the international community and reliable development partners such as the World Bank Group to usher in sustainable transformation in Africa. For either to remain relevant to the evolving needs of member countries especially in Africa, it must grow and adopt responsive and innovative mechanisms to finance transformational development. Our collective aspiration to accelerate development in Africa by providing sustainable financing from either 21 replenishment remains a critical milestone that must be achieved with resounding success. A renewed commitment to good governance, transparency, and accountability must be central to our efforts. These are the cornerstones upon which we can build resilient institutions and foster an environment conducive to investment, innovation, and economic growth. Therefore, Sierra Leone unreservedly endorses the Nairobi IDA communique and looks forward to working with recipient African nations to advocate for a mega 21st IDA replenishment. The communique reflects our vision to ensure prosperity of Africans and particularly safeguard the aspirations of Agenda 2063 and the SDGs, which aim to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, all people enjoy peace and prosperity. Today, as we present the Ida Nairobi communique, we are optimistic that the provision of additional resources would support our vision for a climate-smart, resilient, an integrated Africa. The IDA 21 resources should help our countries expand quality, sustainable, climate smart infrastructure investment in agriculture, energy, transport, water, and sanitation, healthcare infrastructure, and other sectors. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Africa is key to global growth, security, and ending poverty in a livable planet. Despite the many threats our nations face, there are also real opportunities on the continent. Our natural resources, youthful population, and rapid growth of African cities and the middle classes have huge potential as they are beckons for investors to search in search of new markets. 
If Africa is to meet the targets of SDG 8, decent work and economic growth by 2030, we must act now to transform the working age population into productive forces with more decent and inclusive jobs for the youth, especially our women. According to the International Labour Organization, ILO, over 72 million youths in Africa are not in education, training, or employment. And the majority of these are women. The IDA 21 replenishment thus provides a window to increase job creation through scaling up private sector investment, increasing critical and growth sectors, promoting entrepreneurial skills, technology and innovation, and boosting female empowerment. As measured by the World Bank's Human Capital Index, assuming that a child born in sub-Saharan Africa benefits from complete education and full health care coverage, he or she is anticipated to realize only 40% of future productivity. The Human Capital Index, this Human Capital Index is 48% for lower income countries and 71% for higher income countries. Clearly, we have more work to do for Africa. Therefore, stronger global cooperation and a commitment to investing in African capital, a human capital, and creating a productive workforce are important ingredients in enabling developing countries to escape the trap of poverty and enhance economic growth and development. As we all strive to prioritize education and skills development, enhance quality health and well-being, and promote social protection policies and coverage, we must do so with a strong desire and will to advocate for increased resources that we make an indelible footprint in our lives for our people. In our collective action for IDA 21 replenishment, we must ensure that women and girls, we must ensure that empowering women and girls is not optional. It is a condition for achieving inclusivity and sustainable development on our, con on our continent. We must allocate increased resources for gender mainstreaming in all our development programs. This includes improving women's access to productive resources, strengthening access to quality social services such as education, methana, and childhood addressing gender-based violence and advancing women's leadership and representation in decision-making platforms. Also, given our prevailing free, uh, fragilities, increased resources for security, for security, conflict prevention and management, peace building, access to justice and crisis, and emergency response we serve as important pillars in building stronger and more peaceful and a more peaceful continent. But furthermore, as our countries seek to leverage the fourth industrial revolution technologies, scaling up digitalization efforts across the continent requires enormous financial resources. As global leaders, we must be resolute in changing the face of business processes systems and the models in our institutions. The call for IDA 21 replenishment should ensure that we make additional investments in areas such as payment systems, development, digital financial inclusion, fintech development, and digitalization of tax administration systems. Your Excellencies, Closing Africa's huge infrastructure gap should be an important component 
of the blueprint for the pending either pooling of resources. Investment in critical infrastructure such as, such as energy, roads, information, communication, and technology remain the pathway to a buoyant growth. Through the IDA 21 resources, the World Bank's new energy program could support member countries in making huge investment in renewable energy sources and power transmission lines, an important sector required to spur economic growth and support our industrialization, as uh, has been uh, ably spoken to by our big brother, President Yuweri Museveni. Improving service delivery, accountability, and transparency in governance is critical to all these. Strengthening domestic revenue mobilization efforts, improving public expenditure efficiency and management is key. Improving debt management and exploring innovative ways to deal with unanticipated shocks is of utmost importance to all of us. We anticipate that the IDA 21 replenishment will further help countries with increased debt budget support for their development programs. In conclusion, most of our countries are facing dire economic challenges, worsened by high levels of debt service payment. Despite these financial challenges, my government remains committed to delivering people-centered development through a medium-term national development program, uh, 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 plan. We are leveraging the big five game changers, priority areas of intervention to improve the quality of life of our people. These include one, our flagship feed saloon program to boost agricultural productivity and achieve food security. Two, accelerating human capital development. Three, developing youth employment schemes. Four, revamping our public service architecture. And five, infrastructure development and improving technology. We require substantial financial and technical support and strategic partnership to spur sustainable growth and social progress in Sierra Leone to alleviate extreme poverty in our country. Given the need to support the pact articulated in the Nairobi communique, I join my colleagues in the call to generate resources for IDA 21 replenishment that will be significantly higher than the record 93 billion raised in 2022 for either 20. <clears throat> As we continue this appeal, we are not oblivious to the challenging economic and geopolitical landscape that could have implications for major donor countries. We, however, remain optimistic that our traditional donors, new and emerging donors, and philanthropic organizations will once again rise to the occasion and give their valuable support to the IDA replenishment effort. Let us build a stronger Africa, share prosperity with IDA, and strengthen partnerships and cooperation to assure that no one is left behind. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Before I invite the next leader onto the stage, may I very politely and humbly ask those who are yet to speak to keep to the allocated five minutes, please, if you can. Allow me on that note to invite His Excellency Abiy Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia, to the stage. Your Excellency, President William Ruto, 
Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency Aja Bangeol Bank Group President, Ida representatives of other regions, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by thanking our host, my brother, President Ruto. As we gather today, our shared vision for prosperous, equitable, and sustainable future hinges upon our ability to address the pressing challenges faced by countries across the continent, while also harnessing the immense potential of its youth population. Allow me to shed light on the state of affairs in Ethiopia, a nation that has been harnessing resilience in the face of a spectrum of challenges aggravated by external forces such as climate change, pandemic, geopolitical tension, and the soaring global cost of living. First and foremost, the Ethiopian government has navigated structural macroeconomic reforms amid challenges focusing on attention on macrofinancial stability, productivity enhancement, and favorable investment climate. Second, and central to our collective aspirations for a peaceful continent, we must foster dialogue and reconciliation. In late 2021, Ethiopia formed the National Dialogue Commission to lead inclusive talks, independently tackling ongoing conflicts with wide public involvement. The Commission has thus far had consultative dialogue involving tens of thousands of stakeholders over two years. Regional dialogue are eminent, aiming to, to expand participation further. Third, like many AIDA countries, Ethiopia faces unemployment and a skill, a skill gap challenges, with the government prioritizing accessible education to empower citizens while encouraging youth engagement in startups across various fields. Investment in skills and education is central to Ethiopia's 10-year development plan with a focus on sectors like agriculture, manufacturing, and tourism expected to cover over 2 million new jobs. Fourth, universal energy access stands as a cornerstone for sustainable development. As it stands currently, half of our population is still without access to reliable electricity. We are massively investing on clean and renewable energy generation projects which aims to accelerate universal access to, av to affordable and reliable energy for all our people. Despite possessing over 60,000 megawatt potential from our diverse renewable energy sources, realizing this capacity demands substantial investment. Fifth, the digitalization of economies holds immense potential to enhance connectivity, spur innovation, and expand access to essential services. In Ethiopia, our telecom sector liberalization, mobile money, and digital payment system have expanded financial access in Ethiopia. The National Digital ID program we have launched is also a crucial step towards our digital transformation, greatly improving public service access. Lastly, 
as stewards of our planet, we must prioritize efforts to build a livable future for all. The Horn of Africa faces escalating threats from climate change, including rising temperatures, food insecurity, and extreme weather events. Ethiopia is actively countering these challenges through its Green Legacy Initiative, prioritizing afforestation, reforestation, and environmental conservation. With over 32.5 billion seedlings planted towards a goal of 50 billion over two phases, Ethiopia aligns with global agreements like the Paris Climate Change Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Excellencies, while the International Development Association's existing support must be commended, the sheer scale for challenges many African countries face necessitate a renewed approach. With 120 million people, Ethiopia has great potential for prosperity. Yet, as a key recipient of AIDA support in Africa, Ethiopia faces a significant financing shortfall that may hinder its progress. Meeting the goals of AIDA 21 replenishment is vital to accessing essential development funds and driving Ethiopia toward its maximum potential. We urge AIDA to significantly enhance its financial capacity and funding models, specifically increased support for crisis preparedness, response, and recovery is essential. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm very happy and excited to invite to the stage Her Excellency, Dr. Samia Tuluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, President William Ruto, our host, Chairperson of the African Union, President Mohamed Razaouni of Mauritania, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, President of the World Bank, ladies and gentlemen, I thank President Ruto and the Government of Kenya for the warm hospitality extended to us and commend him on successful, successful hosting of this summit. Last December, Tanzania hosted AIDA 20 midterm review meeting, which among other things highlighted the impact of AIDA financing. In addition, to emphasize the need for an, an ambitious AIDA 21 replenishment, Tanzania reiterated as um, its appreciation for AIDA's collaboration, which has helped to improve maternal and child health indicators, rural electrification rates, access to safe drinking water, and economic recovery more broadly. We believe that it should be a collective effort to highlight both the impactful success stories of AIDA and the potential that AIDA still has. Indeed, AIDA has great potential to help its recipients to leverage resources from other partners. For instance, in Tanzania, we have an infrastructure project in Dar es Salaam called the Simbazi Basin Development Project, which benefited from World Bank support worth $2 million. Having secured these resources, Tanzania has already been able to leverage an additional $60 million from other partners for this project, which aims at strengthening flooding 
of flood resilience and integrated urban development in our economic hub. Excellencies, in a bid to consolidate and building on the success or successes obtained during IDA 20, we are pleased to advance this most important dialogue on IDA 21. We are doing so at a time when Africa and the world are still facing the effects of multiple crises. In light of this crisis, coupled with significant, significant shortfalls in development finance and shrinking fiscal space, what is required in going forward are more concessional resources. Moreover, considering the challenges related to present projected debt levels, we strongly believe that IDA 21 should focus more on providing concessional loans, such as the 50-year credit loans. Given the present date architecture on the continent, these facilities would provide more fiscal space to African countries to address competing development needs. Additionally, in the forthcoming IDA 21 cycle, it is critical that policies are simplified and operational processes are streamlined. This is a matter that has a bearing on the access to development finance, the indirect cost of finance, and the achievement of the development objectives within the planned framework. Excellencies, all what would be discussed during this meeting are underpinned by investment in our human capital, which drives innovation and growth. And this is where my brother, President Museveni, was talking about. Africa needs transfer of technology and technical know-how. It will be recalled that in July 2023, Tanzania, in collaboration with the World Bank, hosted the African Heads of State Human Capital Summit. At that summit, we committed to investing in people for improving productivity and building inclusive and resilient economy. We believe that the commitments highlighted in Dar es Salaam Declaration on Human Capital are relevant and merit IDA's support. Excellencies, history attests to the transformative potential of IDA support for countries to transform and graduate. We expect the same spirit to guide us ambitiously in the IDA 21 replenishment. It is on this basis that Tanzania also calls for an ambitious IDA 21 replenishment that matches Africa's development aspirations with the resource needs. Once again, we commend IDA partners for their support and call upon them to honor their pledges to foster economic development and improve living conditions. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Allow me to invite to the stage His Excellency Evariste Ndiashime, the President of the Republic of Burundi. Excellence, Messieurs Samuel William Ruto, President de la République du Kenya. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de l'Union africaine et Président de la Mauritanie. Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la Banque mondiale. Excellence, Monsieur le Chef d'État et de gouvernement. Excellence, Distingués invités, mesdames, messieurs. Permettez-moi de commencer mon discours en rendant gloire à Dieu qui nous a permis de nous retrouver dans cette belle ville de Nairobi et d'adresser mes remerciements 
à mon homologue et frère William Ruto pour l'accueil chaleureux et fraternel qui nous a été réservé depuis notre arrivée. Excellences, Mesdames, Messieurs, à l'instar d'autres pays, le Burundi se doit de redresser la tendance pour améliorer les conditions de vie des Burundais qui reflètent les inégalités sociales, d'opérer une transformation économique de manière à augmenter et diversifier la production sans entraver l'équilibre écologique, de maîtriser la démographie galopante et de pallier aux effets du changement climatique. Le peuple burundais s'est donné en Paris de l'émergence en déjà 16 ans à travers sa nouvelle vision d'un Burundi émergent en 2040 développé en 2060. It was developed in 2000, 2000. The Burundi people have also, beginning with the young, have also started fighting against and uh, are looking towards sustainable development. So it is in this light that uh, Burundi rejoices to be accounted amongst the partners, amongst whom, in particular, the World Bank. So the Burundi greatly appreciates the intervention of the World Bank over the years, the socio-economic growth. Now, the finance to financing and to have sustainable impact in the energy sector, economy, the environment, education, health, community development, infrastructures for transport and the social development context where our economy had been touched by shocks and whose effect in COVID-19, the Ukrainian conflict, the world fiscal condition, climate changes, and to all this we can add the sanctions that Burundi has known since 2015. Now in 2023, this year was particularly part, uh, marked by uh, some uh, slight improvement in our economic development and in the service sectors, the putting in place of infra social infrastructure and also abundant agricultural production thanks to the cooperation that has was lent to location that improved to the different sector, sectors. Now, this effect also had in the improvement of performance in Burundi that is also seen in uh, that improved for the 2022-2023 fiscal calendar and which has been improved as we move to 2023-2024. This performance on our capacity also has come from the efforts and the reforms that have been initiated by the government and especially in the summit meeting uh, that enabled us to follow up on the projects and also the strengthening of dialogue between the government and partners using the national strategy in the development cooperation, the strengthening of the budgetary discipline in state institution and also micro economic reforms as part of our achievements. In the case of certain projects, I would cite the dynamic uh, coordinating team for projects and also the diligence, the communities that uh, also benefit, were also a uh, part of this uh, team and also in terms of fertilizers that we have had and seeds, and also the putting in, in place social, uh, basic social infrastructure and also integrated community development projects. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, with the new gap that uh, Burundi has fixed, prior 
is uh, that uh, uh, my country is looking at as we take part in IDA 21 and uh, environment health in face of climate change, and such especially on reforms in terms of economic governance and as well as development of important Ladies and gentlemen, in such an exceptional context, we have also been able to know that uh, our tools in the industry are sometimes obsolete, and this also has an impact on production and also the need for social economic integration, the effects of climate change in particular, and especially the rising of rise of Lake Tanganyika waters. We have had floods as well. These all lead me to advocate positively for people who have been at, at, uh, affected, and this includes a project of retention of human labor. So we are confident the investments and the actions that are foreseen in the priority areas that we have identified that are in, co in coherence with our 2024-25 vision and the objectives of development that allow for transformation in the continent will find favor with our technical and financial partners with the bank, World Bank and also as we look to have economic growth. I'd like to end and as I express our thanks to the efforts of our leaders and also reaffirm the commitment of Burundi to play its role to ensure resilient and inclusive growth. I thank you all for lending me your ears. Thank you, your, thank you, Your Excellency. Allow me to move swiftly forward and invite the President of the Republic of Madagascar, Your Excellency Andre Lajolina. You're welcome to the stage. Excellences, Monsieur le Président de la République du Kenya, Excellences, Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Monsieur le Président de la Banque mondiale, so the Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants de l'IDA, Representatives of leaders and institutional fi Mesdames et Messieurs les donateurs financial institutions and uh, your Mesdames et Messieurs, our lenders, ladies and gentlemen, Je tiens tout d'abord to express my gratitude and my thanks au et au to the president and the people pour l'hospitalité à l'endroit de ma délégation et moi-même that my delegation and uh, my team have received since our arrival here in Nairobi. Je félicite le I'd like to congratulate uh, President William Ruto for the organization and the World Bank for the regular organization of this high-level meeting that reunites the contributors and the leaders and the beneficiaries and also to strengthen solidarity and to have a better path for our continent, that is Africa. In effect, this summit allows us to express ourselves, to strengthen the financing of the 
African country pays, also to help us attain our development objectives and sustain the people lived through the consequences of climate change. The participation of Madagascar in this meeting is important because that gives me the opportunity to talk about the important, considerable impact of this project in Madagascar that is by the World Bank through IDA. Like you know, in the later years, the consequences of climate change have become more and more are devastating. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my solidarity with the Kenyan people who are still going through today the consequences of tragic flooding for a number of weeks now. In Madagascar, the cyclones have become more and more frequent and violent. Like you know, my country is really exposed to climate change and especially when we talk about the strategic position of the country and the character of our geographical position of our country makes us more vulnerable. The last cyclone in two just at destroyed the north of my country. Kilometers of roads were destroyed. Thousands of agricultural land was uh, flooded and uh, destroyed. And uh, we have just, uh, in a year we have about, uh, we've had about four successive cyclones. So that I'd like to share with you that in one day, the cyclones ask for need at least two to three years of reconstructions. Yet in that, uh, in the light of climate change, in the south, uh, in the uh, of the mountain, we have seen a diminution of uh, that the lands are arid and do not allow the people to do them well and also to meet their basic needs. Families are living. In, uh, we have uh, uh, thousands of children who are also malnourished. Ladies and gentlemen, dear leaders, you know that each day for decades now, Africa faces uh, fratricide like, to fight against poverty because this leads to deaths. We need more financing to be able to combat this, to win this war. Today, on the African more than 215 million children are suffering from underdevelopment and malnutrition. Like the African Bank of Development says, malnutrition is one of the causes, one principal causes of mortality of children under the age of five. The daily reality of more people is touched by this uh, tragedy. Now, in the light of such an obstacle, so the solution that would look at investment in population, and that means that we need to be more powerful, that is more powerful, and missiles. I'd like to thank the World Bank and its leaders for having given us the means to combat malnutrition in Madagascar. Today, you may not this, the military expenses as 2023 went up, highest in uh, over 10 years. So we'd had up to uh, millions of dollars, and uh, we are also suffering the effects of the war in Ukraine. But I have a question. We have invested. Two billion uh, for 2.14 billion dollars on arms, but how much are we going to invest to so, to save lives on the African continent? So I now to invite our partners and uh, like-minded countries to commit finances to construct fight this war that we fought, fight daily on the African continent to develop and construct the Africa that we want. I am persuaded and convinced that with solidarity and international cooperation, we can have so, 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 tangible solutions to this problem. Dear partners, I would like to share with you that uh, since I became the head of Madagascar and uh, since the beginning 
my second term, the cooperation with the World Bank have allowed for an over positive evolution, for growth, and also to de reduce the rate of crime in Madagascar, coming from, from 40% to 38% currently. So we, have that, we are able to reduce it further, the level of malnutrition in Madagascar by another 4%. So at I am persuaded that in a number of years, we are going to have at least, maybe 30 in maximum, we'll be able to eradicate malnutrition in Madagascar. In the south of my country, a resilient program, resilience program has also been put up uh, in talking about uh, dealing with agriculture, water, and local governance. More than 2 million people have benefited from health services and nutrition with at least 400 and, uh, 450 communities that have been strengthened. However, the investments in the system, in health system, have allowed us to save a number of lives. Money transfers and other social effects have also allowed us to come to the aid of more than 5 million people in 65% uh, amongst whom are 65% women. I'd like to thank the World Bank uh, for all these years of collaboration, for financing that has has been uh, and have allowed us to de improve our development on the significant projects and with our emergence program in Madagascar and the results are palpable. I don't like to cite a few examples through the, uh, the, the main town and also the construction of strategic roads which has eased access to agricultural area, areas and the mar markets so we we have seen Madagascar has been existing. We have always had the problem of inaccessibility. But right now, the road is tarmacked and it facilitates access of people and goods. This program has impacted and changed the daily life of the population in this region. You know that in Madagascar, about 80% of the population are agriculturalists, but unfortunately, the land does not belong to them. It is for this reason that I have this CASEF project that has allowed us to distribute at least uh, uh, 2 million land title deeds of agricultural land, which represents uh, 40% of the population. This will allow the exploitation, you know, the farming and uh, benefit from the national heritage. Land is sacred and it is part of our identity. Despite these adva major advancements, we still have complicated obstacles and resilience is becoming more and more difficult. Madagascar needs more financing and it has to be consequentially financing to help us tap to other resources that accumulated over the decades and also to have electricity made accessible to the uh, population in the big towns. The majority of African population, about 65 uh, percent of Malgash families, do not have access to electricity. It is for this reason that we have put in place a program to electrify each home through a program which we call Azabana one where or light for all. We have decided each household in Madagascar has a solar kit. So our objective is with a year and a half for more than, more than four million households will have this kit to light up their houses. And that will also lead us to an economy that will see 950 million dollars that uh, which is spent in and that is about $2 per home for this lighting project. So this is what we are talking about on the African continent. Ladies and gentlemen, dear partners and leaders, like I had said and I have just done so, so all this, this investment is to support. It is not only uh, where we are functional. We 
also have a number of the arms that are devastating as hunger, famine, kata natural kata catastrophes, illnesses, and most of them are uh, brought about by climate change. These are the kind of arms I'm talking about that are touching us annually, and uh, each day there are millions of children who suck to nutrition. Millions of people die of hunger. And we also have others who do not get uh, adequate health, access to health because uh, of, as they suffer from the if devastating effects of climate crisis and change. I'd like to invite as leaders to also improve from, our, from the World Bank because Africa has many obstacles to face and also enable the and countries to catch up in terms of development. May our voice go out in as an echo. May it also speak about our engagement as we talk a future for all. And together, we'll be able to make a difference. Together, we transform our poverty into an, a, a, a prosperous a future and with a dignified for our people so that all generations the lead generations depend on uh, what the leaders do today. Thank you to our partners, uh, partner countries, and also to the contributors to EDA. Your aid is determined in development, uh, in the development in the, on the African continent. And as such, for a country like Madagascar, we support this uh, for our country. So long live today's leaders who are bringing development for tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Excellency. Head of State to address us, I'd like to recognize the presence of the former Prime Minister of Kenya, Mr. Raila Odinga, and the Chief Justice of Kenya, Martha Comey. You're both welcome. Allow me to ask His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Malawi, Mr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwira, to come to the stage. Excellency and my brother, Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellency, Mr. Jai Banga, President of the World Bank, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Over the past four years, Malawi has been through the hardest times and everyone in my country feels it. Like a patient suffering from serious multiple attacks against multiple organs in quick succession, in the last than 60 months I've been president, Malawi, a nation I found already drowning in unsustainable and toxic levels of debt, has not only suffered the devastation of the COVID pandemic, but before we had any time to recover, was attacked by Cyclones Anna and Gombe back to back. And before we had any time to recover from that, came the worst cholera outbreak in our nation's history, affecting every district and before we had any time to recover from that came a drought devastating the breadbasket northern districts of Malawi. And before we had any time to recover from that came the monstrosity of Cyclone Freddy, killing thousands, displacing over half a million, and trampling on decades of development gains and food crops for millions. 
And now, before we have had any time to recover from that, we have been hit by El Nino weather. That has forced me to declare a state of disaster in 23 out of 28 districts, making me the first president in Malawi's history to declare a state of disaster every year of his time in office thus far. And if hearing all this makes you feel like Malawi should not have survived such shocks, you're right. But I came here to tell you that Malawi is a miracle because despite the anguish Malawians have gone through and the pains they feel, Malawi has not only survived, but is in fact showing signs of recovery. And one of the secrets to our survival and recovery has been the World Bank's IDA, which I'll describe as Malawi's trusted and reliable ambulance in addressing the structural imbalances on the physical, current account and monetary side occasioned by the shocks we have encountered. And like any good ambulance, IDA has saved Malawi from the brink by operating at two speeds simultaneously, the faster speed to immediately treat the collapsing organs of our aiding economy in real time whenever disaster strikes, using quick response instruments to mitigate the impacts of external shocks on the poorest, and the slower speed to get the economy to the hospital for long-term treatment through structural reforms for sustainable and inclusive recovery. On the faster speed of immediate treatment inside the ambulance, IDA has swiftly provided Malawi support to respond to national, regional, and global emergencies affecting food security and balance of payments. Key to this have been initiatives like the Social Support for Resilient Livelihoods Project that aims at responding and building national resilience to disasters. Another example was the $60 million in IDA support we got from the crisis response window to restore the operations of Capuchita Power Plant, which was damaged by Cyclones Anna and Gombe resulting in the loss of one-third of our electricity generation capacity. Similarly, IDA is financing big reconstruction and infrastructure damaged by Cyclone Freddy last year, as well as helping us scale and smarten up our social protection systems and engage communities in the restoration of forestry, river banks, and degraded landscapes. A more recent example is how the bank has quickly responded to my appeal for $446.5 million in international support for the 9 million Malawians in need of food assistance in the face of El Nino. And it has done so by releasing $57.62 million to support the country's disaster response, while a further $7 million is coming through the sovereign drought insurance policy with the Africa Risk Capacity, ARC. So in total, the emergency care we have received inside the IDA ambulance en route to the hospital has risen from an average of $100 million in disbursements four years ago to now around $6 million, which is a record. In fact, Malawi is the first African country to sign up to the IDA's new crisis response toolkit, which will enable IDA to respond even more rapidly going forward. But let me conclude by talking about our ambitions for IDA on the long-term structural issues. Our ambitions go beyond stabilizing the patient 
as we have done with our macroeconomic conditions through our close collaboration with IDA and the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Our ambition is to access even more substantial facilities in the IDA and other instruments the bank has tailor-made for us so that we can invest in the implementation of our ATM strategy, which aims at making heavy investments in the economic potential and productivity of our agriculture, tourism, and mining sectors. Our ambition is to create an inclusively wealthy middle-income economy within the next six years by creating mega farms that feed the world by leveraging irrigation technologies that transcend weather conditions. Our ambition is to generate foreign revenue through tourism products that make Malawi the destination of choice for tourists. Our ambition is to generate wealth from our bastion of mineral riches by adding value to them and using the revenue to develop our people, our public service delivery, our industries, and our infrastructure through the operationalization and capitalization of the newly formed Malawi Development Cooperation. We will therefore appeal for flexibility in the accessibility of idea facilities, for our ambition is for the bank to go beyond in ambulance emergency treatment and in hospital long-term recovery. Our ambition is for the bank to partner with us in building a new Malawi, one that is healthy, a healthy economy capable of being productive and competitive globally, leveraging on the new opportunities and markets emerging from the Africa continental free trade area. And to safeguard the impact of your investments in this ATM strategy, we have rolled out a fully integrated and comprehensive financial management information system, if missed, that will support our first program for results, P4R, financing with IDA. We have implemented energy sector reforms to crowd in new private investors through public-private partnerships. We have enacted the Malawi Disaster Risk Management Act to put our disaster risk management framework in order. And we, have, we are seized of the urgency of reconfiguring our civil service to focus on rewarding execution and delivery of projects, not entitlement and dysfunction. I must therefore thank the World Bank for recognizing these reforms by resuming general budget support to Malawi under Development Policy Operation, DPO. After a decade-long hiatus and following Malawi's successful qualification for the IMF's Extended Credit Facility, ECF, six months ago. And with these remarks, Malawi fully welcomes the replenishment of the IDA as a vehicle for economic transformation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. President. And all my colleagues, uh, I think it's a great privilege for the World Bank to be here at this IDA summit so graciously hosted by the President of Kenya. But I want to start with recognizing that right now Kenya is suffering in one portion of its country some devastating floods. And I extend my deepest condolences to all those affected. And you know the World Bank will be there with you throughout this period, sir. This is the tragedy and, and the challenges of climate change. Four years of drought followed by floods. And this is one of the reasons why, as the Cabinet Secretary spoke, the livable planet is such an important part of our future. These moments are devastating for families and for communities. Uh, they pull countries backward. They darken our hopes. But the horizon of Kenya, the horizon of the continent, I am firmly convinced, remains very bright. We are here united by a shared vision for the future of Africa, a continent that is rich in diversity, in culture, in potential. 
It is very easy to feel hopeful when we are together anywhere in Africa. You feel the sun in your face, the wind at your back, the fertile and mineral-rich earth under your feet, and most importantly, you feel the infectious energy of young people. But these are the ingredients that can power the future. They are not new blessings, and over the course of history, this abundance has too often brought profiteering rather than prosperity. Today, we are focused on a brighter future for every country on the continent and the people who call it home. The International Development Association has been a steadfast partner in Africa's development journey. This summit symbolizes our objective commitment to accelerating progress. But we have to move with urgency, we have to move with purpose, and we have to have a focus on results and on impact. This will require more from IDA, it will require more from all parts of the World Bank Group, it will require more from governments, and it will require more from the private sector. We stand at the cusp of a new era of growth and prosperity for Africa, or we have come together merely to admire its potential. The choice of where to go with that is ours. IDA remains dedicated to supporting your efforts to investing in the people of Africa. We are working to make IDA more efficient. We are working to make it able to deliver faster by cutting burdensome rules, requirements, and redundancies. We believe a simpler and reimagined IDA can be deployed with more focus to make meaningful impact to advance the fundamental needs, energy access, healthcare availability, realize the agricultural potential of this continent, and build out critical infrastructure and skills in its people. We see boundless opportunities to advance your development goals. But we're going to have to work for it, and that should guide our discussion as we go forward today. Let's harness our collective energy, point it towards making impacts that will resonate for generations to come. Once again, let me extend my deepest gratitude to President Ruto for hosting in this beautiful country, and to each of you for traveling to be with us today. I look forward to interacting with you as the day goes along. Thank you very much, sir.